I uh, would like to thank the International Trade Council for giving us the opportunity to talk about Guinea, present uh, our country. Uh, I know uh, most of the people listening to us uh, probably doesn't know uh, Guinea. Now, of course, you have several Guinea. The, the, the Guinea I'm from is uh, called Republic of Guinea. I am, my name is Namori Kamara. I'm the managing director of uh, APIP, Private Investment Promotion Agency. So during this presentation, uh, you will, uh, will present you some of the opportunity that you can find here. But the first things that uh, probably I will take you through is to present you overall uh, Guinea. Guinea is situated in uh, West Africa, uh, neighboring six countries uh, with uh, the same size as uh, United Kingdom, 245,000 uh, uh, square uh, kilometer, uh, with the population of uh, 12.7 million, and uh, the, the the life expectancy is uh, around uh, 61. Uh, the story about uh, Guinea population is the youth. Next, youth. 72% of the population are uh, uh, more than thir uh, 35, uh, less than 35 years old. So it's, it's an extreme young population, and that's a good thing to know. Uh, in terms of macroeconomy, we have uh, we've been growing. Uh, at some point, we nearly grew at double digit. In 2019, for example, uh, the, the GDP growth was uh, nearly 10%. But despite um, uh, some setback, the pandemic, international crisis that we all know today, uh, the GDP growth in Guinea is above 5%, which is remarkable, and Guinea has been... Uh, 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 indicated uh, in 2020 among, uh, among the 10 uh, fastest accelerated GDP growth in Africa, six after Rwanda. Uh, the inflation has been also under control. It's extremely important to, uh, to know that we're controlling uh, uh, the fundamentals and, uh, the, and, uh, and that's important because inflation is all over the place now. It's the key topic point. Uh, we've been uh, the GDP uh, around Guinea. The GDP of Guinea is around 11 billion, uh, but there are huge potential. Uh, we have uh, uh, five priority sectors. Uh, I will start by agriculture, uh, energy, mine, infrastructure, and ITC. But you know, uh, the, during the presentation, you will see some of these uh, 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 opportunities in every sectors. A market with great potential. Uh, I did mention that as well, the population. Uh, but if you look at also uh, the maritime aspect, we Guinea have 300 kilo kilometer of maritime front. And uh, I think I did mention that the population is around 12.7, but that's not the full story. When you invest in Guinea, you have direct access to 64 million consumers. Uh, Guinea borders six countries, and those six countries, if you look at Sierra Leone, it's only three hours from Conakry. So we are, we are also part of uh, a member of ECOWAS. It's extremely important to know. Uh, it's a, a free economical zone, so which means when you invest in Guinea, uh, you can uh, export uh, your goods in all these countries without paying custom duty. And ECOWAS currently, the population is around 340 million, but it's expecting in the next 15 years to reach 500 million. Uh, of course, Nigeria is around 200 million. So even the population of Guinea in the next two decades will probably double. So there is huge potential here to invest. So, uh, business climate. So the business climate, uh, it's important for you to know the business climate of our country. Uh, the business climate has uh, improved a lot uh, in, uh, in Guinea. Uh, I will give you some key indication uh, in terms of doing business. Uh, we have, uh, over the past 10 years, Guinea has, I think, uh, has, has moved uh, uh, from not being classified rank in the rank 
now we are we've been classified and uh, and uh, with, uh, we earn more than 23 uh, points in terms of doing business uh, when you invest in guinea you have an investment code you are investors are, are kind of have kind of guarantees and these guarantees are indicated in the law in the code yeah, which probably you will find in many countries uh, some of these key highlights of guarantee that you can have it, it's access to the real estate and concession remain free for all of all the investors uh, which means that there is no difference between me and I when you invest you can have access to you know the land uh, and all the concession that you want uh, there is also a freedom to uh, own up to 100% of your company share I know some of the countries where it's mandatory for example to have uh, a local national as a shareholder uh, in Guinea there is no uh, such a law so you can be uh, owner of your, com uh, your company 100% and also when you make profit in the country you pay your taxes to what we call dividend of course uh, you can uh, expat repatriate your your to, or transfer your your dividend your profit abroad uh, anywhere you want there is absolutely no restriction for that as well uh, so in terms of tax and custom incentive investing in Guinea give you a custom exemption for the importation of agriculture equipment raw material and input input for 10 years so uh, 10 years and these 10 years can uh, you can even uh, have more than 10 years when you invest in zone uh, in the countryside because we want to uh, encourage investors to, uh, to invest far away from Conakry. You have tax holidays or preferential rate up to 10 years as well. Uh, there's one also guarantee that uh, which is extremely important for you to know. You are protected against measure of nat nationalization and expropriation of companies except for reason of public utility after a fair prior compensation. I haven't witnessed any kind of such situation in Guinea, but when it happens, you, uh, you have a fair compensation. Uh, the doing business, which is uh, an indicator, a World Bank ranking indicator, among others, uh, you know, I think I touched base on that earlier. Uh, Guinea at some point was among the three uh, most reforming countries in French-speaking West Africa. Uh, 23 places since 2012 and with four key reform and these reform are you know related to uh, starting business which is the ease of doing business the, uh, the, it's become easier now to register your business you will see that later on obtaining your building permit and the cross-border train trade also has improved and the execution of contracts uh, we have uh, uh, a commercial court now in Guinea, which is uh, extremely important. Uh, when there is a dispute between uh, uh, businessmen, uh, they can go to that court and it's much easier, it's much faster. Uh, so, one stop shop of building permits, uh, we call that Guichet Unique du Permis de Construire, uh, to allow people to get uh, the building permit very quickly, fast. So that has been oper operationalized well by the support of the World Bank. Uh, we have the operationalization of the one-stop uh, shop of foreign trade. Uh, we call that Guichet Unique du Commerce Exterior, which is also extremely important uh, for import and exports of goods in the country. Uh, because we're talking about trade, and uh, I think it would be good to know that our trade, our trade segment or area uh, has been digitalized a lot so and the guichet unique or, one, or the one-stop shop has been operationalized for that we also have launched uh, last year what we call e-tax platform so you companies businesses uh, you know now can pay all the taxes online uh, you, you don't have to pay uh, you don't have to pay it in the, in a classical way in the manual way and we have even, uh, I'm sure in some country, even in the US, the digital money, the mobile money <laughs> is something that even the, uh, the US is uh, far beyond uh, compared to uh, Africa. So you can pay your taxes by what we call orange money too, so which we have implemented in our country. 
uh, the last, the, the, the fourth one that I wanted to touch base was the commercial court. I think I've done that already, and this is also operational. Overall, which means that, uh, as I said, you know, business has been, climate has been improved. Uh, the, the agency that I, I led, a PIP, uh, one stop shop, you can create your company. Uh, you know, I will say 80% of the company are created within uh, 24 hours, but it will take you 72 hours to, to create, to register uh, what we call a society anonym, a more complex where you have to probably go to notary. And that's take time, but our ambition is to allow people to create their company within two or three hours. That's one of my main targets. Infrastructure, all, you know, although you have all these reform, which, is, which are really important, but it's also important to indicate to you that Guinea has invested a lot in infrastructure to improve people's life first, it's important, and which contributes also to improve the business climate. But if you look at, if you take the port of Conakry, uh, you know, I think I did say that uh, Guinea border 300 kilometers of maritime front. So we have a port in Conakry, which we have invested a lot in an expansion of autonomous port of Conakry uh, by 88 hectares. Uh, if you look at in 2018, for example, we had 1,185 1, ships in 2018 compared to 2010. So eight years, uh, we, have, we did in 2010 around 694, nearly the double. So the port of Conakry, because of that, was saturated, uh, nearly saturated. That's why uh, there has been this huge investment in expanding the port. It's a 500 million investment uh, to expand the port of Conakry. And the port of Conakry also can uh, feed uh, other countries such as Mali. Mali doesn't have access to, uh, uh, to the seafront. They don't have a port. So some of the goods of, uh, from Mali are you know, coming from uh, the port of Conakry. And Conakry has, uh, is closer to uh, Bamako than Senegal, uh, if you compare to say, Senegal to, uh, to Bamako. So I think it's 200 kilometer uh, differences. Besia, the Besia is uh, our international airport. Uh, the capacity has improved as well because has been, you know, there's been a huge investment. The airport of Conakry is uh, managed by ADP, uh, ADP uh, Aeroport de Paris as a concession. Uh, for many years now, so uh, the company who is which is managing Paris Charles de Gaulle uh, is the same company who, uh, you know, which, uh, who has invested uh, heavily in Guinea. And now uh, I think we open in the we did open the share as well. AFDB or Africa 50, which is part of uh, African Development Bank, has invested a lot to expand. So from from 300,000 uh, passenger in 2010. The latest figure that we have in 2018, so we have a PAX number around 1 million, over 1 million passengers. There is also a need to invest in domestic airports, so there is opportunity here to expand in that area. Road system, uh, we have invested a lot, I think, uh, in terms of infrastructure and road, I think it's around 2.5 billion investment that we did we've done over the past 10 years in infrastructure, but we still need to invest a lot. Uh, we have around 48,000, I think, uh, network of road, kilometer road in Guinea, and I don't think even 5% even has been uh, really, 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 uh, you know, built on. And, uh, so there is a huge, huge opportunities here. Uh, to invest in in our road infrastructure. Uh, so the maintenance, uh, we did a lot of maintenances, but it's not enough. Uh, 4,000 kilometers of degraded national road, improvement of 5,000 kilometers of prefectural and community road, construction of 200 kilometers of urban road in Conakry and some city, 
uh, in the in the interior of uh, on the countryside or in the interior of the on, of the country. There is also there has been investment a lot in tourism infrastructure. I remember in 2010 there was no five star well there was no even decent hotel even a three star hotel in Conakry. So nowadays you have uh, you know we have I think around four six hotel uh, ranked uh, you know between four and five star. So we have one of uh, our iconic uh, hotel Grand Sheraton. I think it's the one in Grand Sheraton. I believe so in. Uh, in West Africa, if, uh, yeah, if, uh, even in Africa, uh, so it's extremely important also to know that that we have heavily invested in uh, in our in our hospitality sectors. It's, uh, it's growing fast, and we need more investment because we have uh, uh, what we call uh, African uh, cups coming soon uh, in the next three years. So we need probably more accommodation as well. Uh, so, um, if you take the number of hotel infrastructure growing, I said, you know, 1.1800 billion yen invested. So, nearly 2 billion investment in the hotel industry in Guinea. So, I will not probably go into all these numbers, uh, but uh, uh, there is even a new hotel uh, Hyatt coming soon in Guinea. But there's still, the story is there is still need to invest in, in hospitalities industry in our country. Investment opportunities is probably that which matters to you. So now you know where is Guinea. Uh, so you know a little bit about Guinea now. So, but where are the opportunities? Uh, so, so we'll talk about that a little bit as well. Uh, you know, I think I did mention as well the five key sectors at the beginning of the presentation. So I'll start by the mining because people know Guinea uh, from the mining, Guinea has been uh, known as being uh, scandal geologique, <laughs> and scandal, it's a, it's a ge geological scandal. And I used to say in some of my presentation that is probably one of the best kept secret in many areas, not only in mining, but if you look at mining today, uh, we took the bauxite for example. Uh, we've been uh, Guinea is ranked as the second country, uh, second exporter. Of the uh, of bauxite in the world after Australia, so we have huge uh, the potential in bauxite for nearly uh, a billion or billion forty billion uh, resources. Uh, we also have iron, one of the biggest investment in iron, uh, Simandu, twenty billion, which is uh, twenty five billion, which is still ongoing. Gold, diamond, limestone, and then some entire resources. See, uh, for as, a, as, as a testimonial, you have every single country in Guinea in the mining sectors. Well, the biggest mining reserve in Guinea uh, is owned by CBG. CBG is owned by Alcoa. Alcoa is US based. So uh, we invested 6.4 billion in the mining sectors. But mining is not only the, it's not the only sectors uh, story about Guinea potential. You have also agriculture. We have 13 million Arab land in Guinea, and we have invested a lot, uh, subsidized fertilizer, improved food seed, mechanization, because it's extremely important. Uh, the government has invested a lot in, in all this digitalization as well. Uh, if you look at in terms of uh, infrastructure, agricultural infrastructure, you have, for example, uh, 16,000 hectares of landscape hydro farm plants already exploited. So there is huge potential in agriculture. You can grow anything in Guinea, uh, coffee, cacao, cashew nuts, uh, huge potential. And uh, I think we we really, 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 you know, uh, reminding people that Guinea is not only about mining, uh, the potential is massive in agriculture. Uh, it's rain, six month rain in Guinea. Uh, so. We, it's a, we call it uh, Chateau de, de l'Afrique. We have more than 1,000 rivers, so water and irrigation is not an issue. Even in that area as well, we, the Minister of Lagrotter has initiated the development program of hydro farm, 100,000 hectares, so extremely important to know. And, uh, and in, you know, in each region, you know, Guinea Maritime, for example, or Moyen Guinea, all, the, all over in Guinea you could grow a, any type of crops. So it's that's important mm. also to uh, to mention that uh, uh, 
energy, so we have seen mining, agriculture, energy. The energy, uh, we em invested a lot in energy, probably three billions US dollars over the past 10 years. Uh, Kaleta Dam for Kale Dam of Kaleta was 500 million, and the, the latest one, Suapiti Dam, uh, it's, it's around 1.6 billion US dollars. So there is there has been a huge investment in Guinea. And uh, there is still potential because we have 6,000 kilowatts of potential, and we have all some of the hydro dam which are on, you know, coming soon, uh, which need also investment. Amaria, but we'll talk about that later on. Uh, there was all there is also LNG gas because all this mining has to be transformed in this country in the in the next uh, in the next decade. So we need more energy, and we require more energy as well. But investment, huge investment, has been done in, in that uh, in that aspect. Uh, the 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 third, uh, I will say, the fourth key sectors is information and communication (ITC). Uh, there has been a digital growth. Uh, the penetration of mobile phone is uh, it's more than it's nearly 200 percent. I will say. Uh, internet also is penetrating, but there is potential here. Yeah. We've invested uh, probably more than uh, nearly 400 million US dollar over the past 10 years in ICT, uh, and we need more. Uh, de we, de we have deployed 4,000 kilometers of NDC cable and installation of 70 in internet exchanges, but there is still a huge, huge, because of the youthness of the population, the population is really young, so they require these uh, digital, they are digital angry, so they need, they need more data. And data costs a lot of money here, so we are calling on investors to come and invest in this area as well. Uh, so we will uh, probably uh, uh, mention some of the projects that uh, could be interesting, but after the presentation, if you need to look at these pro uh, projects or investment opportunity, you can uh, contact me directly or contact the team. Uh, there is a, a project in ITC, Guinea Telecom, uh, which uh, is looking for investment. Uh, you know, we, I, I can give you details of uh, this. Is access to 4G license. So this the, this project is on uh, on in, it's already available on the market. We have a few investment opportunities as well in uh, hydroelectric dam. Uh, Zebeleta uh, Hydrotic Dam, which is around 200 million. So we, I can share the, all this information with you after the presentations. Uh, uh, would like so the last the probably uh, uh, information that I wanted to give you, it's about a peak. So, about you know, we present mention uh, all this country. Uh, easy to do business, uh, but I, know, I would uh, like to remind you that the, the agency that listening to us uh, uh, led, it's, probably it's, doesn't uh, know uh, people Guinea. are here to now, support course, you. you have so we Guinea. have a dedicated team the, the, the Guinea uh, investors from abroad is, uh, uh, call them Republic Charge of de Guinea. Promotion. Uh, so they are able to guide you, and, and, and I'm here myself as well. We have one sort shop for business registration. Agency. We have uh, improved so during this uh, presentation. Uh, 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 you will, uh, uh, will present uh, you some of the opportunities. Climate is a fair or improving here. the business climate, the which is extremely that, uh, important because the agency follow all this reform with the government. Uh, the business support, Guinea the aftercare. Is situated uh, in one thing West is to Africa. come to Guinea and invest, and another yeah, thing is six to do the aftercare. So we uh, have a with, huge uh, department the same here looking as, uh, at the United Kingdom. So all these people are here to support you. Uh, uh, square uh, kilometer. Uh, with the population of uh, 12.7 million. Uh, so, uh, and this the, is about uh, Guinea. The, so, we are waiting for you to, uh, around, uh, to explore more about all these uh, investments. The story about and why not? Guinea population uh, is the uh, youth. Uh, yes, youth. Probably 72% uh, of the population in, in Conakry. Are, That's our aim. Uh, Thank you very much for this. Uh, Thank you. Uh, less than